Lesson 1.2, What's in Your Food Besides Food? The goals of this lesson are to expose students to some of the widely used food production techniques and to have students think critically about how food production affects their health. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to identify food additives, describe uses of certain types of additives in food production, and use evidence to argue the pros and cons of food additives. We'll achieve these goals by playing a matching game where students match types of food additives to the foods in which they are commonly found, and we'll have a brief discussion about types of additives and their use, where we will answer the question, are food additives good or bad? To prepare for this lesson, you will need to review the key scientific concepts that will be presented throughout the lesson. They include the purpose of common additives and food production techniques such as preservatives, nutrients, hormones, antibiotics, and GMOs. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided for you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in this lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides a minute-by-minute -minute explanation of the lesson structure, including instructions on how to manage the discussion and the activity. The student workbook provides additional explanation for the students. You'll need to be sure to print the homework worksheet for each of your students. There is also a teacher's guide to the activity that you may find useful to print. If you plan on using the alternative approach of having students play the matching activity as a card game, you will need to print out a deck of cards and a student worksheet for each student or for each group of students. The key points of this lesson's Do Now are to determine how much your students already know or don't know about food additives, and to make the point that not all food additives are found on a food's ingredients list. We get there by having students brainstorm what they know about specific types of food additives. Remind students that the five types of additives listed here are not the only types of additives in our foods. We have left out other classes of additives like those that change the taste, color, or texture of food. The key points of this lesson's activity are that food additives are prevalent in many foods that we eat, and to have students pay attention to the foods they eat and how those foods were produced. We get there by having students play a matching game. Students will match common types of additives and food production techniques to the foods. You can use the PowerPoint slide deck to match the additives and foods together as a class. An alternative approach to this lesson is to print out the two decks of cards that appear in the alter alternative approaches folder. One of these is a deck of food cards and the other is a deck of additives cards. Students can match the additives and foods, filling out a worksheet in their own time before you review the answers together as a class. The idea of the other ad additives portion of the activity is to get students to think of any other additives in the foods listed that we have not yet discussed. Some of these are listed in the answer key. However you teach this lesson, know that some students may debate whether their answers are right or wrong. This is a great way to dive deeper into a conversation about a specific additive or production technique if you have the time. One technique that may be worth extra time is GMOs or genetically modified organisms. The key points of this lesson's discussion are that there are many types of additives with different purposes. We can find the names of some additives on ingredients labels, and some additives have health risks associated with them. We get there by debriefing the content from the activity. In the discussion, you will present names of some common types of additives. The health risks of these additives is also discussed when it applies. These are the current known health risks, and it's important to note that the science around these risks is constantly growing. The answer to these questions are shown on slide 17, so you can ask your students to answer the questions before giving them the answer. The key point of the lesson's wrap-up is that there are pros and cons of food additives. We get there by having a Socratic discussion. You will ask your students whether additives are good or bad. There is no easy answer to this question, and the answer may change based on who is asking it. This concept is reiterated in the homework. The key point of the lesson's homework is to weigh the pros and cons of food additives. We will get there by using a worksheet. Students will assume the role of a stakeholder, like a parent, farmer, or food manufacturer, and answer questions about whether they approve or disapprove of certain food additives. Students can review this information in the student workbook. During the activity, students have asked whether st pesticides can end up in the meat that we eat. Animals eat plants that are most likely treated with pesticides. There has been some evidence of pesticides residues lingering in beef products, but the levels are very low. 
As mentioned before, students may be curious to learn more about GMOs. Genetically modified organisms are a result of adding or deleting specific genes to the DNA of an organism. A common GMO on the market is in corn or soy that has been modified to include a bacterial gene that is a toxin to some insects. The bacterial gene, shown here in yellow, is removed from the bacterial DNA and inserted into the corn DNA using enzymes. This prevents the crop from being eaten by insects and can reduce the amount of herbicides used on the crop. GMOs aren't limited to plants, and a genetically modified salmon has been approved by the FDA that grows twice as fast as non-modified salmon. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to identify some food additives on an ingredients list and describe the purposes of those additives in food production. Students should also be able to argue the pros and cons of food additives. The most important point students should take away from this lesson is thinking critically about what is in their food and how that food is produced. They will use that thinking again in Lesson 1.3 and in the module's final project. Don't forget if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know. You can contact any of the CTSE team members and we'll be happy to help.